Uh, Ricky Ellison is the founder of the Missile Defense Advocacy Alliance, and he's our go-to guy about missile defense. Now, we're not talking about weaponry. We're talking about the other guys. Now, we got news uh, through a newsletter how Iran has got a satellite, and uh, its launch has caused some concerns. We're going to find out about that. We're also going to find out what's going on with Vladimir. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in Europe right now, particularly in Ukraine. And uh, Russia is flexing its muscles again. And what are we going to do about it? Hopefully defend ourselves. And that's where Ricky Ellison comes in. Hey, Ricky, welcome uh, back to the office. You've been out on the road for a few weeks. I have. Good morning. From Good morning. Washington. How are you doing? How's the weather, man? It must be freezing. It's cold. But it's cold dirty. Weather. It's below freezing. Well, jeez. Yeah. Hey, come on. I got to. Why don't you operate? Listen, in this day and age, nobody knows where you are. Let's put you in a Holly Kalani hotel and operate from Waikiki. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully, I might get out there by June. You know, I love it when we, we are, we're able to talk about fun stuff, and, and hopefully we can have a moment to talk about a pretty good Super Bowl football game. But uh, I am very, very concerned that we've become complacent on this, and I'm particularly concerned with the... Uh, the thing that I got off your website about Iran and this and the satellite launch. What do they need a satellite for? What what what's what's our concern? Well, our concern is they continue to test and get better at putting objects in space, and that just leads to the eventuality of them having a a missile capable of striking the United States. And that's that's the concern that mm -hmm. we have. Well, let me ask you this. I mean, remember back in the day when everybody was uh, else in the world was was accusing Ronald Reagan uh, and Star Wars about putting weapons in space rather than uh, uh, putting, you know, defense in space. Actually, you can use it for both things, can't you? Really? Well, I think they've been using uh, space to transfer offensive weapons since the 50s when they created the ballistic missiles. Yeah. So they, they fly through space. Um, we don't have any defensive weapons in space. Uh, we don't. We disallowed that, and we're not doing that at this point. However, uh, the technology, and thanks in part to what's going on right here in Hawaii at Barking Sands, the technology is to a point where uh, maybe that would have been something we would have wanted to pursue before in space, but now we got it right here on Earth. We don't need to go up in space. With that. Well, we we, uh, we started on Earth, yeah. but we, we intercept in space. So the things that we're doing out in Kauai and PRMF are proving our capabilities to strike those incoming offensive missiles that travel through space in space with the kinetic energy intercept so metal on metal within a couple inches you know you and i talked uh, way back when we say a couple inches about the the scud missiles and how we were able to be so effective with our technology against those but what about the more sophisticated ones now here we got two things going on right ricky we got we got the terrorism the, the war on terrorists and it is distracting us from what's going on in Europe, it, it, it looks Russia looks spooky again. Well, I, I think there's a lot of things going on, but but you're right. You know, we're, we're focused on on ISIS and small individual uh, killings for for PR and for and for uh, terrorist type of movements. Well, we've got to be much more concerned about the bigger picture of of power and the shaping of power and keeping our right. Uh, to what we've preserved over, you know, what, what millions of our, our lives have fought for in World War II, World War One, to have the presence that America has, not to not to erode that presence, and that's a much bigger issue than uh, terrorist attacks, I think, in in the Middle East. Yeah, and that's a great point. And I want to roll back the clock a minute because when you and I first started talking about this, it was at the end of the Soviet Union, as it was then known. It was the breakup, and we thought, oh, this is going to be great because it's going to help us ally up with a couple of those countries, uh, like Poland, like some others. And and all of a sudden, it looks to me as though we've lost a little bit of ground. It looks like Russia is getting pretty more serious. They they were, you know, uh, aren't they the biggest prevention from us and NATO working together? Yep. Uh, and, you know, I think what had happened um, when President Obama came into office six years ago, they had a philosophy, a new direction that they would uh, reset relations with Russia and give them concessions to get along with them to see if they can change their tactic and their approach to the West. And so as part of those concessions, we did limit, especially missile defense, because that was a very sensitive subject mm -hmm. to Russia because Ronald Reagan used that to break the Soviet Union. So we gave up a lot of our modernization, a lot of our GMD stuff, and, and limited our stuff in, in Europe. The, the strategy reversed itself, as you've seen, with, with Syria, with with Ukraine, and they have leveraged uh, that ability to influence the NATO allies not to engage 
with missile defense and are, and are trying to, to stop our, our deployments and developments of it, which is not directed at them, which the systems cannot technically defeat their missiles. Mm-hmm. It's built for uh, protection of Europe against Iran. But they're using that as, you know, the big bad wolf and the United States in their own domestic politics to say, hey, this is the, you know, the, these are the evil people. We need to leverage uh, that in a PR position to, to get more offensive capability, more power under Putin. So he's been using missile defense in his way to help his agenda. Um, and I'm saying to us, to our people, you know, we, we, we don't need to be influenced by Russia, that we need to go straight ahead. It's about us, not about Russia. Yeah, and by the way, I, I've also learned from your website, and folks, I want you to go check it out, Missile Defense Advocacy Alliance. Uh, go to missiledefenseadvocacy.org and look at this, because it's not as though we're just saying it's all one guy. It's not the big bear Putin. Uh, I read another piece that you put out about the uh, deputy prime minister, this guy, uh, Rosagun, uh, and, and he is just rubber stamping. In other words, this is not a one-man band. This is a whole bunch of people looking at this. Absolutely. And they're going to different arguments against it. But, again, I think those those reset relations did not work, and they took advantage of it. It's, again, like a, like going to lunch, uh, taking your lunch with you to school, and the school bully is taking your lunch from you. We're, we're, we've been, our lunch has been taken and continue to be taken. So we've got to, to stop that at some point. How about this one? I mean, you know, remember the concern we all had about Cuba, and we cut them off, and their their relationship with the Russians back then, with the Soviet Union, and and deploying, a, you know, a armament just literally on our border. And now look, we're we're hugging, we're kissing, we're making up, and they haven't changed their philosophy or ideology. They're still a communist nation. Uh, is that's even more distracting? Well, I don't think I don't think Cuba is a threat to our country in, in any shape, way, or form. Well, certainly not like, militarily, like, not, yeah. like Russia is, or so forth. And that's you know that's a that's a different situation uh, on that. So I'm not too concerned about that one. Okay, well that's good to know because I, I don't want I don't want to think. <laughs> well, all right, you know now we're kissy huggy with them, and then they're going to let somebody come back in again. You know? No, no. Yeah. I think I, you know that's a lot of things have changed. Uh, you know, over was that fifty years from now? Yeah, it is. And I think you know, if you get them exposed to the natural, the natural capitalism and the natural uh, power of information will overtake that whole society and break it if it opened up to the West. So I, I think that you know that that, that will happen, and I, I think Cuba will cease to be used. Can't continue having that kind of monarchy, communist rule without information being blocked. So yeah. you, you, you'll, it, it's going to turn out in the, in the Well, right I, I hope so, because from what I, you know, I, I was saying uh, uh, tongue-in-cheek a couple of days ago, it was, it was the tobacco guys getting together wanting the cigars. It's got nothing to do with <laughs> kind of communism or anything else. Uh, Ricky, I, I know that a lot of times everybody's juggling a lot of things. They're juggling the economy, they're juggling their future and family stuff and everything else, and sometimes we can't see the forest for the trees. And I'm wondering if, if, you anticipated, I want to go back, when, when, when Obama was first elected, you had high hopes that he was uh, going to understand, the his administration was going to understand the importance of missile defense. And for a while it looked that way. Uh, but now it looks like it's sort of backburnered. I mean, what sort of information can you share about the, the Pentagon's uh, backing up uh, your thoughts and other thoughts to make the president aware that missile defense is important? Well, I, like I said, he came in with that reset to Russia, so we really atrophied our GMD system. Our GMD system wasn't funded correctly, wasn't tested correctly, and we put it on the wayside. And the budget dropped all the way down from nine to six, six billion a year. In fact, yesterday the president put a budget in for this year, and it's up at eight point one billion. So he's seen the light, but it's taken him four or five years to see the light to put to invest back into our homeland defense because that's the key thing here. We have to be able to protect Hawaii, all of our other 49 states, our American territories. We've got real existing threats from North Korea and Iran that are going to use, be used or threatened to be used to strike our citizens. So that that's the number one thing, and that's the thing that he did not fund over that period of time. He's been elected. He's had to come to terms with that. 
and we are now slowly trying to get that back to where it needs to be. Do you think that uh, with the with the change in the in the strength of the Republican dominance of not the House even bigger than it used to be, and by the widest margin in, in many decades, and now the control of the Senate, uh, that there be more sympathetical ears to the, the differentiating between missile uh, d defense and and aggression. You know what I mean? We, we got everybody wants to hack the budget and say, well, let's fix our own country, but doesn't right. that doesn't that mean turning some of those uh, dollars into defense dollars? Well, what's happened, as you know, sequestra, which says you, you know you've got to level your funding. If you can't level your funding. Uh, you're, you're at a certain level of spending. What's interesting is that the president submitted his budget, and he was 30, I think, 30 billion or so over the sequestered number. But he was did that for defense, but he also did that for the social programs. So he's given it back to Congress. Yeah. So where is the money? So, Everybody's so, so, so now you, you you've got to break the sequestered. If you want extra money, you're going to have to have extra social programs. Well, what they're, that's exactly what they're talking about. Hey, the very rich can afford more taxes, and we can in, we can enable uh, so, more social programs. Right, but but regardless, we we still have to have you know funding to to support the defense of our nation, and funding to shape those people that are trying to attack our nation, and that, that, that's where I and, and we don't need offensive capability to do it. We don't need to go to wars to do that. We don't need to fund all the the operations that we've done in the past, we've got to become a much more capable country to defend ourselves from all sorts of things. Do we sometimes get a little d distracted, Ricky, that we're looking at terrorism and everybody says, well, you know, those guys, they're not a threat that with missiles or anything. We don't need to have missile defense against those guys. Uh, those guys are more car bombs and suicide bombs. Uh, is that distracting uh, from the main no, point? It, yeah, but they also have that access. When we do mortars, rockets, we, I mean, everything that they can fly. Um, but I, I think the, act, the the problem is, is, that, is that these small groups have got the attention of the media of the world, their yep. social media. So th these are they blow up to be much bigger on the horizon, much pe more people more aware of it. But they're they're really they're not going to come in and take over America. They're not going to come shape and change the the balance of power. They're, they can't do that. No, we, but we're, we're wrapped up into that. I, and, and I think you got to step back and look at the look at the. You know, you look at the weeds, not, not the yeah. big top. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, let's, you know, let's shift gears for a minute because I, I, I want to ask you, I, I really enjoyed the football game. I really thought it was, it was a great, great game. And I know that because of uh, your acumen, that, that uh, the first thing my wife said, and she's a Brit, says, the butler did it. You know, it, wasn't that a great, she, she said, the butler did it. Uh, Ricky, wasn't that a great, uh, a great football game no matter what you you know, I, I'm a defensive guy, so I, I look at it the other end. Yeah. I mean, the defense knew the play, prepared for the play, practiced the play, and they went to the big time to win the game on the goal line stand, which is awesome to see. <laughs> if you want to look at it, nobody looks at it like that. Yeah. And, and and I think it's great that they, they figured it out and they played at that high level. But I would go to the other side and say, hey, you know, if you're going to – the critical play to win the game, you put the ball in your best player's hands. Absolutely. And your team knows it. And yep. you let the team win the game. You don't, it doesn't matter what play, you can call any play, well except for that play probably, <laughs> but you but you, the, your teammates have confidence in giving the ball to that guy. They're going to play a lot harder with a play they believe in than, than they don't with a, not, with not a play that they don't believe in. Yeah, that's a great point. And you know, it, it, it also fueled the Russ Francis fire for another couple of years about the value of tight ends in football. I mean, this guy Gronkowski is an absolute terror, isn't he? Yeah, he was. He's uh, he's unbelievable. You know, if they would have done something, they should have done a play fake to the to the beast mode and thrown a tight end in the flat. He would have been course. wide open. All and by then, himself. It's, it's, instead of this three wide receiver goal line thrown in traffic on a, on a play that, that wants to make the offensive coordinator look like he's a hero. You know, it's not about the offensive coordinator. <laughs> What did you think when you saw that shot on the sideline of Pete Carroll when he took his headset off and, and went down on, on one knee? That was just... I, I thought of the same thing I thought yep. when they played Texas on fourth and one and they didn't give the ball to Reggie Bush <laughs> yeah. and they got stuff. So, you know, it's the same thing. Yep. It's unbelievable. Well, you know, it, it, it left everybody on a pretty high note. It, everybody's talking dynasty. And, you know, and, and, and I know that, uh, of all people you know, that just the thrill of that. I mean, can you imagine oh. how Brady felt when he saw that interception? Well, there's nothing as dramatic. There's no sport that can be as dramatic as that at the very end of the game to cause that kind of emotion and, and, and 
in, in drama that, that we're all appealed to, no matter which side you're on. It was a phenomenal outcome. We never would have thought that it could come down. That well, day. remember, remember, we used to all talk. We, you and I, talked about it in the past. The catch. Everybody knows what the catch was when Dwight Clark is in the back of that end zone. The catch. What about this guy that that like played uh, volleyball with himself for about two minutes? Oh, was that awesome? Yeah. That's, that's but it's not going to be remembered because they didn't no, win the game. No, if they would have won the game. It would be he would be a legend uh, on that. Yeah. Well, the very next play took him right out of the uh, right out of the spotlight, didn't it? Yeah, it yeah. sure did. Well, it's I look, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do for the next five months, man. I'm going to be joining for football, <laughs> but it's always a pleasure to hook up with you, Ricky. Thanks so much Thank for being and, and keeping up the good fight. People want to know more. Is the is the best way to just go to uh, mda.org? Yeah, M- yeah, mda.org would be great, or M- missile defense advocacy.org would be great. Or they can Google my name or, or missile defense and it'll come up. And you know we're sure, we've got all the live tests. We've, we've got intercepts. Well, you can see there's a lot of information there. Hey, I got an email from a guy in Connecticut uh, that I guess is a regular. Um, uh, you know, he checks in on on the site all the time, and he heard our one of our interviews, and he said, "Hey, did you know that you're on that on that thing? That was really cool. Thanks for putting that up there." <laughs> Good. Hey, take care of yourself, Ricky. Okay. Hello. Okay. There you go, Ricky yeah. Ellison, the founder of the Missile Defense Advocacy Alliance. Uh, go to missilesdefenseadvocacy.org. Just go MDAA or Ricky Ellison, and it's R-I-K-I because he's a Kiwi. Uh, Mail and more traffic report. You got it. Six fifty.